So we're going to open up. Um, each candidate is going to have two minutes to answer the question, why are you running on your caucuses slate or joint slate? And so Michael will start us off. Okay. All right. And uh, again, I, I, I forgot to mention also I'm the delegate. I've been chapter leader from newcomers. I'm currently the delegate from newcomers. Um, and I'd like to thank Sally. I'd like to thank Teachers United and Night Corp for inviting us and having this event tonight. And I'd like to thank you all for coming, showing your interest in the union, in the future and life of the union, and the future and the life of public schools in New York City. Um, I'm here tonight, and I'm running as part of the ICE TJC slate. I'm a founding member of ICE. Uh, and one of, the, one of my prime motivations for running, for my participation in the union, and in particular for my participation and my running on an opposition slate, is to counter what I see as the gross attacks on public education, on teachers, on students, on parents, and in fact on democracy itself. And we see that through the imposition of mayoral control, which throughout the urban school systems of the country has become a vehicle for privatization, the entree of for-profit uh, EMOs, educational management organizations, so-called nonprofit charter management organizations, so-called nonprofit charter schools, the directors of which are paid grossly inflated, inflated salaries. I'm running against the balkanization of the school system, the development of multiple tiers within the public school system, which charter schools represent, whereby the charter schools are creaming students, keeping out some students, notably special ed, students with special needs, special ed students, students, English language learners, counseling out students who can't make the cut on their test scores. I'm here to oppose the move of private money, huge amounts of private money, Wall Street money, and finance capital that is moving in attacking public education, looking to override public education, and is using charter schools as its vehicle. Oh, is that? Yeah, oh, sorry. Sam here is holding cards for public education. Um, yeah, I'll just try, I don't know if anybody else was there, but yesterday I was part of a, a protest, March 4th, the National Day of Action in Defense of Public Education, which was an initiative started actually in California by our brothers and sisters in unions there, um, where thousands and thousands of people came out um, to, to, to protest the attacks on our schools. I, th I, mean, I think we all agree on the scale of the assault on public education today. The question is how to fight back. Um, sadly, that was something that was not actually something that our union uh, endorsed or participated in, despite the fact, I mean, I did raise a resolution in our delegate assembly last week about this, um, and it was uh, argued against by one of our vice presidents, a uh, member of the Unity Caucus, and I think for me that probably encapsulates what, why I'm actually running on this slate. I think that we need, especially given the kind of scale of assault, we actually need a real fight back. We need to organize, we need to join in with our brothers and sisters across the country who are organizing, um, and instead, I think too often we're told that, you know, we can't do that, we'll do a court case, we'll do something else, um, and that leaves uh, the rank and file, I think, highly demobilized, except for when they organize themselves. Um, and for most people, uh, the union is just something on a health care form um, or something like that. I think very, most people are very disconnected from it. I've been teaching for um, 11, um, this is my uh, almost 11 years now, um, and uh, since that time, I think the kind of changes in the workplace, I've been working a longer day, um, more of my day is spent doing uh, stupid administrative work that doesn't actually serve the interests of anybody. Um, we've seen mayoral control, more testing come in, um, and uh, the creation of ATRs as a direct result of our 2005 contract, um, which makes us all more vulnerable um, and helps to pave the way to the school closings that we've seen on a massive level. My school's now one of the ones on the state list to be either restructured or closed. Um, and I think in response to that, you know, our union has actually kept saying that we need to take these concessions after concession um, to avoid something even worse down the line. So in every single step, we actually turn defeats into victories. We say that we need to fight merit pay by accepting forms of merit pay. Um, we accept budget cuts to fight budget cuts. The same thing with um, we start charter schools to be able to fight them. And I think we actually need to change that. We need a democratic union that starts with the right and files its base, mobilizes at the chapter level, and actually learns to, um, to fight back with the strength, which is our members um, itself. Thank you, Megan and Leo, if you could start. Uh, 
thank you. <clears throat> when I started teaching 25 years ago, um, the Department of Education began a renovation on the school building where I was working. And they pulled out asbestos ceilings in the student cafeteria, the teacher cafeteria, while we sat there reading. <laughs> and um, because I had a history of political activism and because I had an organizing background, um, I ended up um, getting our school closed for three months um, while there was an asbestos abatement in the school. And at that point, um, I asked myself if I was going to spend the rest of my life in education in New York City, um, and if I wanted to make sure that education moved in a progressive direction, um, what should I do? And it was clear to me that as a teacher, the teachers' union was the institution which was the place to be. That if I was going to be successful in all sorts of forms, I needed to be involved in the union. And, and when I got involved in the union, I first became involved in opposition groups. Um, I have a political background where um, I had been um, an organizer, a national leader of an organization that was um, very much on the other side of Al Shanker, and I assumed that I had a natural affinity um, with opposition groups. Um, but I quickly found that the opposition groups in the union lacked a vision of a good alternative future for public education. Um, I quickly found that they had a, a very stultified vision of unionism as an industrial unionism. Um, and um, it became important, I think, um, that I found that there was, in the leadership of the union, um, an openness, a willingness to address those very issues. And so that's where I found myself um, and, and where I have pursued that original vision that I started with 25 years ago. Thanks. I um, also wanted to thank uh, NICOR and Teachers Unite for setting up this forum. I think it's very valuable. I think uh, members really need a forum to hear what uh, what the caucuses are saying. I started in 1973. It's not a personal history, but very interesting. I was thinking, Leo mentioning his school, Clara Barton. I was the vice president of the academic high schools at that time, and I remember visiting Leo's school uh, to deal with the asbestos problem. So I, I know the, that issue very well, but more importantly, I started in 1970, and 73 became active in the union after getting my tenure. And I found that repeated, actually I started in this union because I had a grievance that the union failed to represent me in 19, well, before 73. In those years we did not have medical, dental uh, coverage, and the union leadership won the right to restore that to people who were per day, who were doing day to day actually teaching full programs. And when I went to, uh, to grieve that situation, my union represent representative didn't show up. The DOE submitted a statement saying it was an agreement worked out by the union leadership. And I decided then that either I had to fight to make things right in this union, or I had to say to hell with it, I want no part of an organization that doesn't represent its members. But that's ancient history. Uh, today, it's very simple. We're running on the same issues that we ran in 1973, 83, 93, and today. And the fact is that kids in schools and teachers are getting shafted every day. The threat and the pressure on our membership is tremendous. They need an activist group that is going to mobilize, is going to uh, get our members activated and more militant in the schools, more involved around the issues. We are supporting in this election Mike Mulgrew because we think that that's the direction that Mulgrew is going. We support that effort and we do not believe that firing our, our uh, fire at the union leadership is the best way to move forward the interests of the members of this union.